Dr. Perriman, thank you so much for meeting with us today. We wanted to know a little bit about your insights on dry eye. If you could share some of your um, insights, maybe some new findings that have come out on, on dry eye diagnosis that can help the clinician. So uh, th thank you very much for the invitation. It's lovely to be here. Um, that's a big question, right? That's a big, broad question. So I'll try to answer that with a little bit more of a historical arc of what we experienced. When I did my initial training, we had artificial tears and plugs and erythromycin ointment. And that's all we had, really, for dry disease. And it was based on signs and symptoms. And traditionally, signs and symptoms don't correlate well. And I think that leads to a lot of frustration <laughs> in our colleagues. And pinning down was essentially a very noisy disease state and what is really a slippery fish to to really pin down and understand. The exciting thing that's happened and that's different now is from your traditional signs and symptoms, you have staining as the best correlate between signs and symptoms, and I definitely still stain everyone. But now you have things like osmolarity testing, which is such a rapid point of care information, vital sign of the lacrimal gland functioning test to have. And in addition, you have an in-office test for inflammatory biomarkers such as MMP9 which are upregulated in dry eye disease. And both osmolarity and MMP9 have significant implications for visual outcomes after cataract and refractive surgery. So the good news is that we have more tools than ever to really understand what's sitting in the chair in front of us. It's a very prevalent problem, 33 million Americans, and this has impacts on your surgical planning. And the good news is, is that our new testing modalities really help to quickly find out if there's a problem that has to be addressed prior to surgery. Sure. Dr. Perrin, what what's some advice that you'd give to the clinician in their day-to-day -day practice when they're looking to diagnose dry eye and maybe use some of these new tools or, or maybe not? Well, I think if you're just getting started in treating dry eye yourself, I think it's good to keep it really simple. And it really comes down to three things that I think are really important to incorporate, especially if you're just getting started or if you're very busy. Uh, three main things. Number one, do you have fluctuations in vision? The proof study data shows us that that's a significant finding amongst early stage level two dry eye patients, and so that becomes a sensitive question to ask the dry eye patient, and it's simple, it's one question. Number two, definitely get osmolarity testing. I find that test to be probably my best indicator to the physiologic functioning of the entire apparatus devoted to creating a healthy tear film, and a healthy tear film can create a healthy wound healing response after surgery. And then number three, I think it's very important to know what your inflammatory load is. If your inflammatory markers are elevated, um, I think it is really important to address that prior to topography, IOL calculation, refractive surgery, because we do know it's correlated with complications such as uh, epithelial ingrowth, striae, uh, enhancement rates, refractive outcome surprises, et cetera. So I think you've got a powerful one, two, three, efficient in-office punch for capturing the vast majority of these dry eye cases. Dr. Perman, thank you so much. Appreciate your time.